Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about SD1, which is part of Cisco's DNA, Digital Network Architecture. Looking at the traditional way to do our WAN deployments first. So traditionally, each of those WAN edge routers is going to be configured individually, one at a time. And this leads to the configuration not being standardized organization wide. The focus is on the basic link connectivity, not the required performance for applications. And because we're using particular hardware and a configuration tied to a particular service provider in each location, it's typically difficult if we want to migrate to another WAN service. So next, let's look at how SD-WAN improves upon that. Cisco acquired the other company, Viptela, in 2017 to enhance Cisco's existing SD-WAN solution, which was previously called iWAN for Intelligent WAN. SD-WAN provides automated setup of WAN connectivity between sites and the monitoring and failover is automated as well. So because SD-WAN is part of Cisco's digital network architecture, the whole part of that is to give centralized control of our operations and for everything to be automated rather than the old way of configuring our devices one by one. And with SD-WAN, as well as the setup, the monitoring, and the failover all being automated, the traffic flow control is application aware. So if on a particular site, if it has got multiple WAN connections, say one going over the internet, another one going over MPLS, well, based on your different applications needs, SD-WAN can automatically send particular application traffic over the most suitable WAN connection. So the benefits that we get with SD-WAN, we get that automated standardized setup of connectivity between all our WAN sites. It's transport independent. So it doesn't matter what kind of WAN links you've got in each different site, whether that's internet or going over MPLS or whatever, any kind of connection, SD-WAN will work with that. It gives simplified and centralized integrated operations, which gives you more flexibility because it's transport independent. It's easy to migrate your WAN services. You get the required predictable performance for your important applications because it is application aware. It integrates with the latest cloud and network technologies. So the routers that SD-WAN can control, you can have those on premises in your branch, you can also have cloud-based routers controlled by SD-WAN as well. So if you're using a popular public cloud provider like AWS or Microsoft Azure, you can have virtual routers in the cloud being controlled by SD-WAN. And because you've got all this flexibility and it makes your operations easier, that gives you a lower cost solution. So let's look at how the solution actually works now. So there's four main components. Down at the bottom in the data plane, we've got our edge routers. That can be a V-Edge router originally from Viptela, or it can be various different models of Cisco routers as well. And these can be physical or virtual routers. Then we need to have our different components which are controlling the solution. And these all run as separate virtual machines. So for the control plane, we have got the vSmart controller. Then for management, we have got the vManage NMS system. And for orchestration, we have got the vBond orchestrator. And this solution can scale. So if you've got a larger environment, you can just add more routers in the data plane, more vSmart controllers in the control plane, more vManage NMS systems, and more vBond orchestrators. So let's look at each of those in a bit more detail. So your VEDGE routers run the data plane. They are in charge of forwarding the actual packets. They can be physical or virtual routers. 
and they form an IPsec encrypted data plane between each other. So each time a new WAN site comes online, it will form VPN tunnels to your other WAN sites. And a site can have two VEDGE routers for redundancy. Next up, we've got the control plane. We've got our vSmart controllers there. They are the centralized brain of the solution. They run as virtual machines and they distribute policy and forwarding information to the vEdge routers and that information is sent inside TLS tunnels. So this is where you're running the control plane. So this is where it's going to build all the routes between the different routers and it tells the routers how to do that and how to forward traffic between each other. Each vEdge router connects to two vSmart controllers for redundancy for them. The management plane is vManage NMS. It enables centralized configuration and simplified changes. It also has real-term alerting. Again, it runs as a virtual machine and these can be clustered for redundancy. So when you're interacting with SD-WAN, you're going to log into the GUI on vManage. That's where you configure everything from. Finally, we have the vBond orchestrator that authenticates all vSmart controllers, vManage NMS, and vEdge routers that join the SD-WAN network. It enables the vEdge routers to discover each other, vManage, and vSmart. It has a public IP address and is deployed in the DMZ. So you might be wondering, because I know I was when I first saw this and I saw the architecture, I thought, okay, I understand why we have vManage, which is where we manage everything. That gives us our admin GUI. And I understand we've got the controller there as well, but why do we also need an orchestrator? Why can't the control plane or the management plane do that for us already? Well, the reason is that they will typically be deployed in your data center. So when a vEdge router first comes online, it needs a way to connect into the solution to download its configuration. It needs to discover all of the other devices. And with your other devices being in the data center, that's not going to work because it's not going to allow incoming connections coming in there. So this is why we have the orchestrator. It pulls everything together and it provides connectivity between everything. It's in the DMZ with a public IP address. So when a vEdge router first comes online, it's able to connect to the vBond orchestrator. It finds all the other components from there. vBond orchestrator also runs as a virtual machine, can also be run on a router and smaller deployments, and multiple vBond orchestrators can be deployed with round-robin DNS for redundancy. ZTP is our zero-touch provisioning service. This is a cloud-based shared service hosted by Cisco, and it's utilized on first boot of the vEdge router only. This directs the vEdge router to vBond to orchestrate it joining to the network. So when you got your router, first take it out of the box, if it's a physical router and have it plugged in, it's going to come online, it's going to connect to the cloud-based service at Cisco, which is going to tell it how to get to its vBond orchestrator. The vBond orchestrator then tells it how to get to the other components. It then downloads its configuration, sets up the tunnels, and you're good to go. vBond, vSmart, and vManage can be deployed on-premises, or they can be hosted in the cloud, either with Cisco or with one of Cisco's partners. Most deployments are in the cloud because it's an easier solution for the customer. Let's look at building the data plane next. So the vSmart controller directs the vEdge routers to build a full mesh by default of IPsec VP tunnels between each other. So by default, it will have a full mesh. If you want to, you can configure this to be hub and spoke or any other topology that you want. vSmart then propagates policy and routing information to the vEdge routers. And that is done through the OMP overlay management protocol. So you can see in my diagram here, I've got my vSmart controller. Now you would actually have two of these for redundancy, but I've just put one in just to make the diagram easier to look at. And you can see we've got our vEdge routers here, which are in our different WAN sites. And in my example, they're each connected with an internet WAN connection and also MPLS WAN as well. So what happens is the vEdge routers come online. They're then told by the ZTP service about how to reach the vBond orchestrator which tells them how to reach the vSmart controller. 
then they will build VPN tunnels to each other with the information from the vSmart controller. The vSmart controller will also tell them what end host IP addresses are available in each site as well. So that builds the routing tables on the routers. Next thing we have bidirectional forwarding detection packets sent over each of those VPN tunnels. That is used to detect if a tunnel goes down. So each router has got a tunnel going to every other router by default and over all the different WAN links as well. BFD packets are sent over all those links regularly to check and we get packets going in both directions. That way the routers can detect if a link goes down, it will be taken out of service until it comes back up again. The BFD packets also provide latency, jitter and loss statistics as well, which we can use to direct packets for different applications over the most suitable connection. If multiple tunnels are available, for example, we've got MPLS and internet as well, then traffic can be load balanced over those different tunnels. For your load balancing algorithms, you can use active active where you send it equally over both, or you can do weighted active active. So if, for example, you want to send more traffic over your MPLS connection because it's higher quality than internet, then you can do that with weighted active active. You can also do application pinning active standby. So you could send maybe email and web traffic over one connection, voice and video traffic over a different connection. It also supports application aware routing, which we can see how that works. So as I said earlier, BFD monitors the latency, jitter, and loss across the different VPN tunnels. You can set minimum requirements for an application with an SLA service level agreement class. SD-WAN ensures the application is sent over a link which meets its SLA requirements. So if, for example, you are sending voice and video traffic over your WAN links, you can set required latency, jitter, and loss to make sure that your calls are good enough quality. SD1 is monitoring the QoS statistics over your links in real time, and it will make sure that voice and video is over the most suitable link. By default, traffic will fall back to another link if no suitable link is available. So if you've got, say, two links that are available and neither of them match the, the required statistics, it doesn't mean the traffic's going to get dropped. It will still go over the best link at that time. Okay, that was everything I needed to tell you about SD1. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.